my brothers, you have just been permitted to take upon yourselves the name of one of the world's most heroic Nike figures. Now you can say, I am a Dimole. To be deemed worthy of the privilege of entering into that comradeship of that great army of youth, both here and abroad, who have dedicated themselves to the ideals of Jacques de Molay, demonstrates our confidence that the finest of your purposes will guide your development into the highest height of manhood. To be accepted as a de Molay is therefore an honor of which any young man can be justly proud. In being received into our ranks, you have been instructed in the seven cardinal virtues of this great order. We hope you have been deeply impressed with the lessons they teach. There is no better foundation upon which to build your character and future life than the practice of these virtues. The Order of Dumoulet teaches these many beautiful lessons, but none is more important than honor and true respect for womanhood, and more especially for motherhood. It is fitting, therefore, that I have called you again to stand before this altar in a few moments of special emphasis upon the virtue which has received first place among jewels adorned in the crown of youth, filial love. For my purpose now, this altar is dedicated to the mother whose love never fails. You may rise to positions of great influence in your commercial, political, or professional life. But you will never reach the heights of your mother's secret hopes for you. You may fall into the lowest depths of infamy and degradation, but you will never fall below the reach of her love. The memory of it will always stir your heart. There is no man so entirely base so completely vile, so utterly low, that they do not hold in their heart a shrine, sacred and apart, for the memory of their mother's love. Were I to draw you a picture of that love divine, it would not be that of a stately angel with a form full of grace, but a tired and toil-worn mother with a grave and tender face. It was your mother who loved you before you were born carried you for a long month close to her heart, and in the fullness of time took God's hand in hers and passed through the valley of shadows to give you life. It was she who cared for you during the helpless years of infancy and the scarcely less dependent years of childhood. As you have grown older, she has done the countless thoughtful, trouble-feeling, helpful, and encouraging things which only a mother seems to know how to do. You may have taken these expressions more or less as matters of course, and without any conscious gratitude or expressions of your appreciation. As you grow older, you are rapidly approaching the time in your life when you will become completely independent of your mother. But those ties with which dependency abounds in your maiden head, that tie of mother love can never be broken. Looking back upon the years of your life as you reach the threshold of manhood, your mother might well say, in the words of the poet, My body fed your body, son, but first a swift thing, compared to one in twenty years, feeding you with spirit's tears. I could not make your mind and soul, but my glad hands have kept you whole. Your groping hands bound me to life with a ruthless band. And all my living became a prayer while all my days looked up a stair for your young feet that trod behind, that you an inspiring way should find. And think that life can give you pain which does not stab in me again. And think that life can give you shame which does not make my pride go lame. Because of all that I have done, remember me like the sun. Keep that crowned body fine and fair. My life is monument to you. For my life, make no woman weep. For my life hold no woman sheep, and see you give no woman scorn for that dark night when you were born. Now on this altar are symbols of that mother love. The white for the mother who is gone, and the red 
where the mother who still lives is left that light. Far in the dim recesses of her heart, where all her questions still, she holds a shrine. Tis here she kneels in prayer, while from above long shafts of light upon her shine. Her heart is flowered fragrant as she prays, a quiver like a candle flame. Each prayer takes wing to bless the world she works among, to leave the radiance of the candle there. We want each of you to choose a flower from this altar. If your mother has passed over to the other shore, you'll choose a white flower. Keep it always sacred. May the sight of it quicken every tender memory of her and strengthen you anew in your efforts to be worthy of her hopes and aspirations for you. If your mother is living, you'll choose a red flower. When you go home tonight, give it to your mother. Tell her it is our recognition of God's best gift to a man, his mother's love. Take her in your arms and say, Mother, I've learned a great lesson today. The ceremony through which I have passed has helped me realize more fully how much you truly mean to me. I am going to try to show you daily how much I appreciate the love and care that you have given me and the sacrifices that you make. Someday, you'll find that flower, I know not where, perhaps in her Bible, or her prayer book, or some other sacred place, a silent witness to what this night has meant to one whose love for you is beyond comprehension of any son. My brother, you will please choose a red or white flower from the altar now. shall endeavor, though to live yet to be worthy of your mother's love. <laughs> 